Hello, I'm Tanja K. Johnson. I'm Alexander Christian. I'm Ellen Bennett. I'm Sylvester Barzi. I'm Victoria Wilder. And this is Voices of Color. And today we're going to be talking about the voices of the future. And what I wanted to start off with the discussion was how do you guys perceive industry in respect to POC writers? Um, I, well, I think we're definitely showing up more than we were before because, um, like, I was reading an article earlier that, like, in 2012, of the top 10 New York Times bestsellers, only three weren't white, and of those three, um, I don't remember if it said one or none were African American. So, like, I think last year we had at least one. Yeah, but I mean, we are like. I guess, moving forward, and I'm real happy about that, but it's still, like, a slow process. Because, like, last year, what, the, I think, like, three Black authors debuted last year. It was uh, um, Children of Blood and Bones, Dread Nation, and um, The Bells. Who Whoever wrote The Bells? I forgot which one. But, when you say debut, do you mean, like, uh, mass-produced, like, the big ones? Yeah, yeah, with the with the big publishers and the ones that everybody was looking for. Right. Yeah, those yeah. were the, top, the three that I saw. Those were the only ones that, like, kept popping up everywhere. Yeah. So. I am going to, uh, as usual, be the voice of dissension. I think that progress is made in fits and starts. Uh, I'm a big political junkie. I am... Mm -hmm. a very active activist. And you see, like, in this past midterms, like, the amount of women, people of color, women of color who got into the race was exponentially larger than all the years before. And I think the same thing is happening with every industry, particularly after Black Panther not only smashed all those records, but then won an Oscar. So yes. I, I think the old adage of what people will spend money on um, all of those, uh, all those old illusions and delusions are, are falling by the wayside. And uh, once a few more people of color make a name for themselves, more people of color will be willing to roll the dice and think it's a possibility. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The more we see it, the more we like, look at us. We're doing this because we were inspired. Yeah. So absolutely. The more people get big, the more, I guess, the gatekeepers see that we're making a lot of money. <laughs> Um, the more that we're going to get pushed out to the forefront and just people are going to be like, look, these are authors of color and they're actually just as talented as they've said they were all these years. It's, it's so bad to think about it that way, but that is exactly how it is. Like with, um, okay, if Black Panther didn't do as well as it did, then they wouldn't have like relaunched the comic books. He wouldn't have got a, a cartoon and all this other stuff. Exactly. But it's it's just it's just kind of ridiculous that it even works that way. I'm happy uh, see that Black Panther has pushed everything forward. I just want it to go, you know, just a little faster, like Killmonger level, like take over the kingdom the next day. <laughs> well, um, I, I actually think that Black Panther uh, came in the wake because when um, Get Out did what it did, because uh, oh, no, there was didn't. no brothers doing, <laughs> there was no brothers getting that kind of press for, especially for horror. No, you know definitely, I mean? definitely. Like the horror. And I, and I think he um he just he didn't open the door. He knocked the wall down. Jordan Jordan Peele really started the whole. I don't. I I I think it's like a whole black revolution in media and entertainment because um Get Out was the start of it. And then came Black Panther. Then came Wrinkle in Time. And now he's he's redoing the Twilight Zone. It's just. But those all came like months apart. So the planning for all of those had been like years in it yeah. together. So like, I don't, I feel like as a group, they all kind of, I don't, I don't want to say that he kicked it off by himself because when he was making his movie, Black Panther was already in the works for like three or four years at that point. Like it was already okay. something that I think all together, like absolutely it changed the, like 2018 changed the industry. Like there is yes. no going back from what both Get Out and Black Panther did and like best movies of the year, uh, some of the best movies of the year. Yeah. Um, uh, just just for my own curiosity, the, <laughs> just like I don't want to say that he kicked it off and it's like um, 
Why? <laughs> I well, have the uh, answer. Oh, go ahead. You know who I think kicked it off? Ooh, Obama. Ooh. The first black president. He oh. gave so many people hope and someone to look up to. He just pretty much changed everyone's view of what they thought a cardboard figure of the president was and he made it to something else, something fresh and alive. And that just revitalized everyone's imaginations. And you can put someone else in these different roles that were always locked down by, you know, a white male. And now there's a whole spectrum of creativity inside these slots. That's so true. That's that's definitely true. That's not where I thought this was going. I thought we were going to bring up Jesse Williams from um, Grey's Anatomy. Ooh. Well, nope. watch you know what? Too, no. what? Tip, tip, tip. Jesse. Jesse's but, a good man. Um, on the same lines, I think he also changed. There's a lot of people in the world who think one image when they think of a black man. And I think he also kind of showed a lot of those those ignorant people like, no, the thing you think is a black man is like what media has been showing you. That's not that's not what. Yeah what all black men are. Most black men are very upstanding, strong, um, cool people. They're not right. they're not trying to take your damn purse. <laughs> Obama and Michelle just they yeah. They definitely did start everything. It it gave you a, it gave the world a whole different look at a black family because like when you turn on TVs and stuff, black families are divorced or the dad's not there. He's got three baby mamas. I mean, even in like, um, what was it? Uh, the Hate You Give, the dad had a baby mama. All right. So do you guys think that POC authors have it harder or have more to prove than non-POC authors? Like That's we true. have to be better. We have to be, our prose has to be stronger, more fluid, more beautiful, just yeah. to even compete with the most mediocre non-POC writer. No, absolutely not. I think um, you have to, and this is uh, particularly what I run into. Everybody wants to know why all of my characters aren't black, why this doesn't take place in the hood, why isn't this based in Africa. Uh, being black is not a part of my identity. It's all that I am. You know what I mean? And I, I, I think when you... Um, I think by branching out, by doing fantasy, by doing horror, you kind of uh, shatter that um, that that monolith. You know what I mean? That that image that they have. Uh, granted, uh, you do have to work harder, but I don't think it's a matter of of quality that they're looking for. It's just that um, they're not willing to even give you a chance outside of how they've mentally pigeonholed you. And when you say they, like, just for anyone listening, we're not talking about all people and all people who are not of color. There's a very specific kind of person who, unfortunately, tends to be the ones in charge of the money or in charge of who gets to be on what list or win what awards. Yeah, yeah. the gatekeepers. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's like, that's exactly how I feel. I mean, like, writing in the horror genre as a black man is uh it's it's different because like yeah i i meet other authors and i love them and i've made some friends and stuff but our stories are not the same our characters are not the same i feel like sometimes readers can't envision themselves in a main character that isn't like them which is very wrong and awkward because throughout our whole existence that's kind of what we had to do all the time like so yeah i I absolutely agree with that um in my story i have a a character who um he's kind of genetically fluid and he he evolves Mm -hmm. as he encounters different um challenges and um when he starts off he's fair-skinned like the elves that he grew up with and after one case of sunburn, he starts to darken, his nose starts to widen. And uh, I, I was getting uh, some flack for saying that black people are an evolutionary step beyond white people, like black people are better. But the whole point is, well, after you get sunburn and your body realizes melanin will help that, that's just the natural, pro- you know what I mean? It wasn't even a racial thing at all for me because by the end of it, he's green, he's a dragon. 
I still, I just want, I still want to know how his nose got wider. Because he is genetically fluid. He's a mutant. He evolves. Uh, okay. So his final form was dragons. Yes, because chloroform is green and it's necessary for photosynthesis, which is the most efficient way to constantly maintain fuel. But I, but I digress. And and my whole thing is, people came at me. Uh, as though I had a racist thought that never crossed my mind because they had a racist thought. And it's like, because I'm black, being black has to be a part of everything I do. So like, you know, when I eat spaghetti, I, I, I turn my fork to the side. You know, I don't know what, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, I feel like the uh, literary community or readers in general, they've kind of put black authors in a box like it's either mm -hmm. you write something really deep and profound about racism or something or yeah. it's like the uh, street lit yeah like you're your w.e.b du bois or your dave Chappelle. that's <laughs> no i feel like in my experience i didn't really I guess, pay attention to who the authors were. For a long time, there were no pictures in book in my books. And um, so I wouldn't even know what race the author was. And I think a lot of readers still read that way. But like because of the way the industry itself is changing, the way it's becoming more technologically um, dependent, we're showing ourselves a lot more. We're showing our face. We're showing who we are. So even if like you're using a pen name or something people are probably still going to be able to see who you are and then try to make judgments then and I feel like when I was younger it wasn't that way I feel like we just read because we read and if it was an author of color you probably found that out later um I think that might be a regional thing uh growing up in Florida whose family came from the Bahamas to Georgia uh <laughs> it, it was it was in everything um, I, I took a lot of flack for not reading black authors. I did not get that. I grew up in Mississippi, and I did not get oh, like, mm. the same kind of vibe. But I feel like that was just because no one cared who I was reading. Like, oh, as long as you were reading, yeah, reading. yeah. Um, and I didn't know like there were like authors, I guess, in school that were brought up. Like, I think we all had to read the Joy Luck Club. I don't know anyone who has not read that at least once. Maybe I do. But um, that's an Asian author. And that was probably the most we got into talking about the race of an author was when we read from that one Asian author. And that was uh, in school. Uh, the Rodney King beating happened when I was in ninth grade. Wow. So as writers of color, how are you going to manipulate your prose to spearhead this change into a new era, to be the voices of the future? I don't know if it's manipulation, but with like, I tried to make sure I have characters of color, um, whether that it, mostly it's black characters um, in my books or mixed characters. Um, but I do also have like just whatever fits the the character, I guess, whatever fits the story. Um, I will have I I'll make sure to have very diverse characters or stories without drawing attention to the fact that it's diverse and trying to make it so that this is just normal. This is just their normal world because this is our normal world and not not pointing out things like, oh, you know, like not having um, my Asian character have to point out that his best friend is a black woman. Like they just are. That's who they are. Their personalities and their cultures are reflected in their behavior and in the way they speak. But it's not something that they have to wrestle over every single day because that's not real life. I go the exact opposite way in the sense that um. I'll have uh, two friends, one black, one white, and they speak exactly the same. Uh, in, uh, r rather than there being any cultural difference, I just kind of melt them down into the same environment. So, you know, if um, if you're white and you're from Runyon Ave in Detroit and you're, or you're black, you're from Runyon Ave in Detroit, you're going to talk the same because the neighborhood determines the lingo. You know what I mean? So I, I, I fuse them to this point where it's almost imperceptible who is what race because the environment has made you the same type of person. Is that true though? Because like, just 
as an example, I have a little sister and we were raised in the exact same environment, but we're two very, very different people. We don't talk the same. If you heard my sister speak, we, we both speak kind of fast, but she, you will not, you will think she's speaking some other language. If you heard her speak, she speaks with this very strong Chicago accent. She's like kind of loud and like aggressive in the way she speaks. And I'm very much, I talk, but I don't want to like step over people and she's she's great like she, my sister's a riot i love her so much but we are super different literally like same everything up until um i went to boarding school like we're just we were very different and it had the same environment so i don't know if that's true like just because you're in the same environment you still are going to reflect different things and that's going to make you speak in a different way because you're filtering and experiencing that environment in a completely different way right i, I understand that but uh you are siblings as opposed to people who chose to be around each other. You know what I mean? So I'm saying, I'm saying chosen family, like me and my friends all behave the same. That's why we're friends. Mm -hmm. Me and my family. We're yeah. Yeah. That's a different story. I guess <laughs> my sister's one of my best friends, but like, I don't know. I also feel like I don't know anyone who I've grown up with to that point where it's like, I would be able to see whether or not we're aligned in those ways. Like a lot of my friends are people that I've met over the years. Okay, Sylvester, do you have anything about the Voices of the Future? I am just going to produce well-rounded, diverse characters and root for everyone black. That's pretty much <laughs> Like, I mean, I, in, in my stories, I try to just I try to bring in the culture of things like in Planet Dead 2, my main character is Christian and he's Mexican. And it's it's really it's things that are peppered in there. Like in my world, the wall's already built and everything. And in the book, he speaks Spanish, but I don't like translate it, translate it or anything because, you know, one, I don't really know Spanish. And two, it's just how the world is. So I'm as far as how I feel like I'm going to keep the movement going, it's just I'm going to keep my head down, learn as much as I can, build my craft, and then just kill them with the books. That's it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to make sure my prose is as strong as possible. Uh. Um, practice and get better in any way that I can. And just make sure that my characters are full, are full, well-rounded, really yeah. likable. Just do the best that I can possibly personally to make my writing the best. Yeah, because I don't know. It's, I guess it's like that with kind of like every aspect in a person of color's life. It just feels like you yeah. can't slip up because it's just another thing that's put on top of you. Yeah, and, you're an unofficial yeah. ambassador. Yeah, and so it's like um, when I wrote Planet Dead 1, the big thing was Catherine was black and she's on the cover looking like a badass. And I had, I had like um, a prominent writer tell me that that wouldn't, that would cause my sales to decrease and that people wouldn't buy my book because of that. And I said, forget it. And I was, <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. So I kept doing it. And then I got um I got a review from one person who liked the book, but they started off with the review so bad. It was just like, I thought this was going to be a POC manifesto where I was just like, oh, okay. But at the end, they said they liked the book, so whatever. Doesn't that kind of go back to what Alex said? Like you having a black character on there makes someone think it's supposed to be all about being black and all about yeah. like that's your whole everything that this story is supposed to be about. Yeah, that's that's what people initially think as soon as they like they look at it. They're like, oh, it's that's black character or it's like it's pushing diversity into horror. No, it's it's life. There are black people everywhere. There are Spanish yes. people everywhere. It's just life. If the zombies came and attacked, I refuse to believe that it's just going to be a group of white people who are going to survive. I've seen other horror movies. And, and yeah, yeah, 
they be running upstairs when they should be out the door. So I don't believe <laughs> That's hiding behind the chainsaws. Yeah. <laughs> all so. right, guys, we are over time, and that's all we have for this episode. Uh, yes, I know we could probably go on for like another 20 minutes. This is a really juicy topic. Like um, but episode. thank you guys for listening. This has been Voices of Color. We'll see you next time. Bye. See you guys later. Peace.